In this video, I'd like to demonstrate the box plot, otherwise known as the box and whisker plot. This type of graph is useful for showing one measure of central tendency, the median, and the distribution or dispersion of data for an interval variable. It's often used to illustrate t-test or ANOVA results. Its value is similar to that of the histogram. At the end of this video, I'll actually demonstrate both of these types of graphs together so you can see how they help demonstrate many of the same characteristics. We'll be looking at an interval measure of social trust in this case. I've already taken the liberty of getting detailed summary statistics for this interval variable, and we'll be referencing some of these values as we look at the box plot. Now the basic command for the box plot is quite simple. Here we see graph box interval variable or graph h box interval variable if you were interested in having the boxes run horizontal. And of course there are options that one can include after those. I typically use the menu system when creating graphs. To do so, simply go to Graphics, Box Plot. And here again you have the orientation options, vertical or horizontal. I'm going to leave it vertical for now. In the variable I'll insert social trust. I'm going to go ahead and click Submit, which will leave my dialog box up and running so I can make changes. So there's the basic box plot. You close that. Now if you wanted to parse your data by category, you can simply go to the Categories tab, and in Group 1, let's insert Gender. Here you can see Social Trust grouped by male and female respondents. We can further parse our data by inserting another grouping variable, ethrace. Here you see it's parsed by gender within each race ethnic group. Let's go ahead and turn those categories off and let's create a horizontal box plot. So how does one interpret the box plot? The main ingredient of a box plot is the eponymous box, i.e. the box itself, which indicates the lower and upper quartiles of the variable. In other words, the upper and lower boundaries of the box represent the 25th percentile and 75th percentile values. And we can see that they correspond to 2.14 and 3.17. The line inside the box represents the 50th percentile, otherwise known as the median, the value which splits our cases into two equal halves. Half of the cases fall above that value, half fall below. We can see that that corresponds to the value of 2.69. Now another way of thinking about the lower and upper quartiles, or the 25th and 75th percentile values, is that they actually represent the medians of each half of the distribution. Finally, when looking at the box, we can think about dispersion. The wider the box, the more dispersion. The shorter the box, the less dispersion. Now the lines extending from the box are called whiskers, and span all data points within 1.5 times the interquartile range of the nearest quartile, stopping at the minimum or maximum value. To calculate this, one simply subtracts the 25th percentile value from the 75th percentile value, multiplies it by 1.5. That value then is added or subtracted to the 75th and 25th percentile values to determine the length of the whiskers. The whiskers end short of that point if the minimum or maximum value in the data is reached. Between the box and the whiskers, one can also detect any skewness in our data. The longer the whisker or quartile range, the more the data trail off in that direction. The shorter they are, the more stacked the data are in those values. We'll see this when we compare our box plot to a histogram. Finally, data points outside the whiskers, as we see here, are considered outliers or extreme cases. One has the option of excluding such cases in the graph by including the option no out in the graph command. Now let's compare this graph plot to a histogram of the same variable. To run a histogram, simply go to graphics histogram, social trust, we'll use frequency, and we can also include reference lines representing the 25th, 50th, and 75th percentiles. So click on x-axis, reference lines, and you see I've already added those values from my summary statistics. And let's hit OK. So there's the histogram with our reference lines. I'm going to go ahead and close that. I've already saved this. And so what I'll do is bring up the two graphs combined so we can see them on, one on top of the other. Again, you can see how the 25th percentiles line up, the medians line up. You can see why this whisker is longer because the data trail off in this particular direction to the left. I hope this video has been helpful in demonstrating how the box plot can be useful in illustrating our data.